Chelsea 4, Malmo 0. But the most important thing is, Callum hudson Adoy got an assist before Jaden Sancho did. One of them cost 80 million pounds. Let's get into the review. Welcome to the Kafka Guys, you brought here. And today's video is an insightful one, quick review, give you a little nice bedtime story. Good morning with your breakfast if you're watching early in the morning. But Chelsea win another Champions League game. And today's performance is an insightful one, an interesting one, and most importantly, a stylish one. We needed this. I haven't seen goals within my team in a long time. And finally, we got four. So everyone should be happy. Everyone should be extremely positive. Everyone should have a beautiful smile on their face. It makes you feel better, smile peeps. But hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and in the comments below, let me know which goal was your favorite. My personal favorite was the Havertz goal. Cheap, beautiful, Chip, I love it, not gonna lie to you. So, if we start looking at the lineup from the outset, the lineup was a very strong one. After Tuchel in his press conference moaned about how he feels Lukaku's playing too much football, he risked him. I understand why he risked him. I think there's context to the analogies, right? Look, he's exhausted, but we needed to win this game. And Romelu Lukaku was going to help us win this game. If we win this game, we put ourselves in a very powerful position to get out the group. Very strong lineup. Thiago Silva, Christensen, and Rudiger at the back. Mount, Werner, very, very experienced, strong lineup. But the game was fantastic. Chelsea came out the blocks firing, and you could tell that there was a spring in their step, there was an initiative. It was intense passing with a purpose. I think Chelsea usually intensely passed the ball around the back, in the middle, but this time it was in zigzags. You know, it was forward, back, forward, back. We were continuously moving up the pitch. There were chances being created straight from the outset, corners being won, and we mounted the pressure. And on the eighth minute, Chelsea get a goal from who else? Andreas Christensen. Yes, Christensen. And never scored a goal for Chelsea before his first goal for Chelsea a beautiful goal cross comes in from a corner gets knocked out couple of headers goes to Thiago Silva who dummies it crosses the ball in and a beautiful half volley from Andreas Christian I'm running out of superlatives to talk about this man he is phenomenal he's a great defender he is a great, powerful presence now. He used to be timid and weak. Now he's just a Viking of a centre-half. And he deserves that goal. A very well-taken goal. Put Chelsea in a commanding lead. And straight away, Chelsea went strength to strength. But you know how Chelsea is, right? When it rains, it pours. And when it, we start scoring goals, we go for the jugular. But the only problem is, something bad happened. Romelu Lukaku showed why he is one of the most prolific strikers in world football. And once he turns his defender, he was bullying two men off him and then the defender made a desperate lunge in the six yard area and Lukaku won a penalty. Winning a penalty is great but the consequence of that penalty was the goal but it also meant Lukaku got injured. I don't know what it means for Lukaku's injury but this is bad news peeps. Look we signed Lukaku to be the solution for our goal scoring issues. He hasn't been but the issue here is now what if we start scoring goals and winning games? When he gets back what do we do? Do we change a winning system? How long is he out for? There is all these negative permutations because he looked very good this game. He was involved. Him and Werner were causing all sorts of problems. Jorginho stepped up, no hips, uh, hip scop, however, skippity dope. Went straight down the middle, simple penalty from him. Top bins, love it. What was very evident and has been evident recently is the way Chelsea have been attacking, they've been making the pitch very wide. The wingers, the twin tens, were going wide. So Mason Mount was hogging the right touchline and uh, what's his name? Timo Werner was hogging the left. Aspilicueta was playing like a false nine. I'm telling you now, when we had the ball, he was coming in so narrow, but he was coming in in literally the twin ten position. It was so difficult to pick up who was going to be located there. There were so many occasions where the runs were coming from him or Ben Chilwell. It was literally blowing my mind. It was asking the questions, right? Why have we got him there instead of a Reese James or instead of a Callum Hudson-Odoi who would be more prolific in that position? And cue the injury. Timo Werner walks off with a muscle injury. It looks like he's not going to be fit for the next game. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Callum Hudson-Odoi comes on. And in my opinion, he had a fantastic game alongside Kai Havertz. And we're going to talk about that relationship. The relationship is beautiful. When you look at Kai and you look at Callum, right, the two players intertwine very well. It's almost a chemistry that experiment going perfectly well. Nothing goes wrong. They link up very well. Even if you hone back to the game against West Brom in Lampard's tenure, the 3-3. The pass is telepathic. 
you guys know they look for each other. They like to play with each other. It's because two great minds think alike. And when they think alike, good things happen. Realistically speaking, this is the fifth goal that Kai Havertz has scored off assists from Callum hudson Adoy in nine starts. Let that sink in. Nine times they've started a game together, five goal contributions. In Chelsea's team, that's good. We don't combine well. Callum had a good game, so did Kai. Kai got a fantastic goal, was a nuisance all game. The only problem with those two is for me, when we're putting crosses in, neither one of them goes to the back stick. Raheem Sterling was getting shouts of being world class, purely because he was getting five to 10 goals like that every year, getting in the back stick. Neither one of them moves their ass to get in. It's frustrating and they need to fix it ASA. Once it was 3-0, it literally became a social experiment of how many goals we're gonna get because we were bullied. Kante was absolutely impeccable in that midfield. And it's nights like this where you start realizing that he's a quality above everyone else in this. Like, where he's dribbling past people, he's winning the ball back at ease, he's making the right decisions in the final third. Even for things that N'Golo Kante's not good at, he was doing well. Like, he was threading passes through left to right, sliding them through, dribbling past people, and Tuchel took a lot of people off. Uh, Tuchel literally rotated people religiously in this game. Ben Chilwell came off, Aspilicueta came off, N'Golo Kante came off, well rested. Timo and Lukaku were injured, so we hope and pray they'll be fine, but a lot of people got game time that don't normally get the game time. And for me, that's very promising. It's a good way to utilize the squad and it breeds competition, and I think that's important. For me, it's very telling, right, when your centre-halves are feeling themselves and they're making crazy runs that the team's playing well. If you look at Antonio Rudiger and you start judging the way his confidence has become under Thomas Tuchel, we've conceded 23 goals in 42 games under the Tuchel. That's mad, and I think Rudiger's been the catalyst in that. The way he won the ball on the halfway line, linked up with Kai Havert, beat a man, gets into the box, He's about to score. The guy pushes him over because he's sick and tired of him, fouls him, and he's smiling because he's enjoying his football. That's exactly what I think it is. I think this man is enjoying his football. He wins a penalty, hop, skip, boom, 4-0. Jorginho gets another goal. And you know what I find hilarious? We score four goals today. We get four. One from a defender, two from Jorginho, and Havertz gets the other. The goal scoring keeps coming from different outlets. While that's a great thing, it's a worrying thing at the same time, and you guys already know the deal. Peeps, I'm over the moon. I'm ridiculously happy with this performance. I thought it was exactly what the doctor ordered. We needed this performance. We needed to be engaging. We needed to be dominant tonight, and that's exactly what we were. Does it matter if we win the group? Yes, it does. So we need to keep winning these games. We need to finish top of this group. We need to beat Juventus in... Uh, in Stanford Bridge when they come back around. I think we will, I really do. I think there'll be a powerful, determined Chelsea side that play against them. But the next step is go to Malmo. Go to Malmo, get the three points, and all of a sudden we're a nine, we're basically all but through, and it's happy day. Then we can start rotating if needed, if it looks like we're not gonna win the group, but otherwise, we're in a fantastic position, peeps. So, today's performance was amazing. Players got rested. Hopefully, Lukaku and Werner are better. I'll record a video tomorrow for you lots to make sure that I feed you lot with some content Well, if there's any news regarding them. If not, Friday will be the next video on the match preview for the Norwich game. So, I got you lot in it. Peace out, I'm out. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we up. Bye.